Welcome to the Writer's Edge Podcast, a platform to share conversations about the health and wellness of horse and rider. I'm your host, Farley Schweigert. Hey y'all, this week on the Writer's Edge Podcast, let's talk about low back pain. Now we've talked about this before on the podcast and I can guarantee you that we're going to talk about it again. It is one of the most common issues in American healthcare. It is basically the number one orthopedic issue when it comes to healthcare. And depending upon the year, it's always in the top 10 of uh, biggest issues on population health for um, the American people. So I thought, gosh, let's have another chat about it because uh, research shows that 80% of people will experience um, back pain within their lifetime. 25% of people have experienced back pain in the last three months. It is a very costly ailment to our economy. And as um, recent uh, the recent outbreak of the coronavirus is showing um, health and wellness does have a tie to um, the economy and vice versa as well. Uh, but nonetheless, it is it costs the U.S. economy a hundred to two hundred billion um, dollars annually, and um, two thirds of that is in lost wages and productivity. <sighs> So if you don't have low back pain right now, you've probably had it some time in your life or your spouse or significant other or family member has it right now. And if you hang out with us here at Rider's Edge, you were probably more of the um, determined or hard-headed persu- persuasion as you just get things done. So we talked about... Um, low back pain in my Facebook group. Head over if you haven't joined that at um, Rider's Edge Health and Wellness for Horse and Rider about what do you do for low back pain. And the results came back just as I thought they would. People were very cautious at first and like, I know what the answer should be, but this is what I really do, which is cool. I was so... Um, excited and thankful that people were honest because we live in the real world. We'd love to, um, actually I wouldn't, but um, I would love to tell you that the world is more um, Instagram picture perfect, but we, um, we experience life in the process um, and the process is where we need to uh, uh, keep in touch with reality and what we need to do to um, be moving forward. So um, responses, responses were I take ibuprofen or Aleve or BC powder or anything like that. Um, Some people take that along with um, doing some movement and changing um, their movement patterns up and doing some exercises and stretching and easy things like that. Um, And then um, the the funny thing that cracked me up for the last couple of discussions we've had about different strategies um, for treating uh, health issues is alcohol has come up. (laughs) And apparently us determined people... um, Whatever our flavor of alcohol is, we'll usually add a little bit of that. And that usually makes whatever ailment we have at least a little more tolerable. So um, take that advice for what it's worth. Uh, I will say of note that um, please be safe uh, when when drinking and, um, of course, in moderation when you can. But um, on the whole, that's how you deal with your ailments. And, you know, let's talk about it and have a discussion. So we live in the real world, um, and which is probably why we drink alcohol. But nonetheless, um, 
we have to get the job done, whatever that job is. So if you're not broken or bleeding, um, then you're probably going to work through the pain, which is not always a bad thing. But I would propose to you um, that maybe we need to change that outlook just a little bit because the summative effects, the cumulative effects, of doing that over time um, will turn you into that 67 year old rancher that uh, shows up on Dale Brisby's Rodeo Time show or um, that older cowboy that you see at the sale barn. So maybe it's time we start thinking more prophylactically, more preventative like and thinking about how um, all these episodes over time can add up and cause major health problems in your 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s. Um, Some people listening to this will say, well, it started a hell of a lot earlier than that, or it happened a lot later. But you get the gist of, of what I'm saying here. So maybe, maybe we need to start Um, using smarter treatment techniques, um, taking medication and um, just kind of grunting through something may not be exactly the best thing for your body in the long run. Um, Getting with a therapist, getting with somebody Um, to work through movement patterns because as I've told you before the human body is amazing it's just like our horses that really want to work for us it will find a way to get the job done it will it will create new movement patterns it will create new structural patterns by tightening down the fascial system in places to support um It's interesting within that fascial tightening that can often be mistaken for strength later on when it really started out as maybe a tightening to survive an insult and that pattern continued to exist. And um, as the pain goes away, the the tighter pattern does not change. Um, And over time that can cause issues. So maybe we need to think about that approach and what that's doing to our body and our long-term plans, which is, uh, I'm here to tell you as well, hard to see sometimes. Um, Or we can kind of get lost in the muck and the mire of the day-to-day actions. But think about some of those long-term effects that maybe we can slow down or even prevent altogether. Um, Having worked uh, in physical therapy for 11 years now, I fully believe that a lot of total joints um, that happen later in life are cumulative effects. And, And I think a lot of times it is an injury that is nagging for a couple days or a couple months and seems insignificant, you know, once you kind of um, get the body to quit telling you that there's pain, then you uh, uh, kind of ignore it or forget about it. And like I said, those bad movement patterns, they're not bad. They're just not correct. Um, You can say, oh, Farrell's were splitting hairs here, but no, it's not. It's um, it's still getting the job done. It's um, just uh, not getting it done as well as it could be. So I think we should kind of look at um, our ways of addressing low back pain in maybe a different light that maybe we need to pay attention to it a little bit more. Um, and do a little bit more changes faster. I've had clients say, 
that I treat my low back pain now by um, the set of exercises you gave me. And they're not a magical set of exercises by any means, but they're an important foundational set of exercises that allows the body to move through its degrees of motion correctly. And when you relay a foundation or uncover a foundation, you're able to build on that better, more correct. So um, adding that in to your routine might make the whole, all the difference in the world instead of ignoring or bucking up or drinking more or taking more ibuprofen. It may be doing ibuprofen for a little while and adding those exercises in along with walking or some other type of movement that would help. <clears throat> so it's really kind of um, today's discussion. I really want to be like, Take a step back, slow your roll, and think about how this might, just a small change in how I treat something that nags me once a year. I've had clients say, oh, I get down on my back once a year. Well, I, it's not going to have a whole lot to do with uh, the time of year as much as is during that time of year, do you have a certain activity going on or are you coming off a number of activities that aggravate it and then that's when you notice it. Um, so it's just, a, um, it, it doesn't have any correlation that way. But maybe having you stop and think about doing something a little bit differently will give you a lot healthier down the road. Low back pain can be treated several different ways. We've talked about that before on Rider's Edge uh, podcast, uh, as well as through our other social media channels. It can be treated with physical therapy. Evidence does show that um, physical therapy for acute low back pain, acute being immediate low back pain um, through the phase or even chronic low back pain, will significantly decrease your chances of surgery. It will also significantly decrease the total amount of money you will spend with healthcare providers for that episode of care. Let's say that a little bit simpler. It's a lot cheaper to go see a physical therapist and work through your low back pain problems on when you look at total amount of money spent than it is to go through a different route. Now, I am not uh, running down doctors by any means, but physical therapists are the movement experts. And I am a full believer that somebody taking their time with you, getting a full history and understanding your why you do something and the goals of what you want to get done along with taking their clinical knowledge and their clinical testing is going to give you an overall better outcome than um, writing a prescription out and say here go take this test go get this picture taken and then we'll be able to determine what's going on now depending upon the severity of um, the low back pain, the amount of time it's been going on, the type of symptoms, you got, you may need imaging and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but I think we need to look at the whole picture of what's going on and then determine from there. So as you very well know, there's a lot of medications, um, that are prescribed for low back pain. Uh, when we talk about low back pain, we have to talk about the opiate crisis in this country of too many painkillers being prescribed. Again, uh, physical therapy is a great answer to that issue of getting out there and moving. The downfall to physical therapy, and let's be real real here at Rider's Edge, is that it's work. It's work on your part, and it's 
often not fun or sexy. I, I'll be here to tell you that too. If I have extra time in the day, I would much rather spend it working at the barn or doing something on my horses than I would working on me. But on the flip side of that, you have to remember, as we've talked about here many times, your health affects your horse's health. So um, you have to look at the big picture of working on you is actually working at the barn and helping you and your horse get to your goals. There are a lot of other options as well to back pain. Of course, that's going to depend on your symptoms and your consultation with your physical therapist and your physician. Um, In some cases, surgery is an option and a good option if the clinical signs and the imaging match up to something that can be surgically worked on surgery for the low back is a great option. However, in my experience, that does not always get looked at before somebody gets told that surgery is the best option for them. Oftentimes, uh, um, the decision to go to surgery is made strictly on the imaging and the lack of response to medication. Um, or the imaging and lack of full response to a session of physical therapy. And my question to that is, um, did you complete the physical therapy? And did you have a physical therapist that was not a bobo and actually took the time to um, work with you and um, help you work through every single option to get you the best outcome that you can get. Steroid injections, uh, just like injecting joints on a horse, sometimes can be helpful to help with low back pain. Um, But just like we have to think about it on um, hocks and uh, other joints, stifles and all, all the joints on the horse, we've got to think about the long-term effects and how viable of an option is that for treating our symptoms. There are other modalities and treatment uh, techniques that work great. Dry needling is one of them. Dry needling is a form of acupuncture. Um, acupuncture is very helpful uh, with low back pain as well. Um, Class 4 laser is another good option for working through soft tissue issues um, within the low back, along with other um, treatment uh, methods that you can work through with your therapist. A reminder, if you are dealing with low back pain, and this is even hard for me sometimes, is that... um, we all, um, we all as in the healthcare field, um, the NIH, all the major healthcare experts in our country say avoid excessive bed rest, which uh, is super hard because if I'm hurting or sick, I want left alone in my bed with my dog. And when I feel better, I'll come back out. But we know through research, we know through the mechanics of how the back works, that that is not helpful for that tissue. And some gentle movement um, will help you get a lot further down the road faster than just resting. Also, it's looking at um, your body mechanics and your posture. If you are rodeoing real hard right now or headed to a horse show, look at how you are sitting in the driver's seat of your truck. We spend a lot of hours behind the wheel. And I know for me, I have a tendency to um, have a posture that does not help my right SI joint, which is where my low back problems typically originate from. So looking at that, 
working through their different cushions and aids <clears throat> because uh, and I apologize for the, the froggy throat because it is definitely springtime here and the farmers are out in the fields and trees are starting to bloom and uh, makes for makes for a froggy froggy throat but back to the truck seats and the car seats historically vehicles while heated seats are super super exciting um, they do not um, car seats and truck seats historically are not very good on your posture at all and so it may take some different um, pillows or cushions or gosh even having different seats put in your vehicle depending upon how much time you spend in it and if that really is a cause for you um, another quick tip gentlemen if you're driving and you carry your wallet in your back pocket please 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 take it out while you're driving because that amount of unevenness and pressure over time can build up to a very angry low back. And finally, as we've talked about today, um, within treating your low back is moving, moving correctly. Um, and once you're moving correctly, um, strengthening muscles and getting more fit, that will help with um, curving some of your low back pain issues. Um, and again, if you are dealing with this, um, giving yourself some space and grace on treating it the best that you can with what you have. And then if, when you know better, do better. Um, when you've learned things on Rider's Edge, seek people out. Um, seek, if you're having trouble with low back pain, uh, seek me out on the website and let's hop on a video consult if you are not in the area um, or if you're in the area let's meet up and I can come to you we're very mobile here at Rider's Edge and let's meet up and see if we can help you work through um, your issues your older self your current horses and even horses you don't even know you're going to have in the future will thank you for that um, because low back pain will cause uh, pain in pain on your horse in your horse uh, from the unevenness because as the old the physics law states energy is neither created nor destroyed it's only transferred so your uneven energy and force from dealing with your pain is transferred to your horse um, which can transfer into vet bills down the road and lost time in competition. And uh, we all want to be able to do better with our horses and compete better and more with our horses. Um, for for dang sure. So, I hope that maybe gave you a different twist on low back pain and different thoughts on how you deal with it and how you combat it and, and how you talk about it. Um, if there's somebody that it's really bothering in your family, um, maybe it's your dad, maybe it's your husband or wife um, or um, family member, you know, talk to them and say, hey, let's work on let's work on finding a solution that's a real life solution. Um, we don't have to chain Fonda this and get the 80s leotard out and do all the exercises perfectly. Um, we can come up with a set of exercises and set of movement patterns that work for you and your lifestyle and, and how your day is structured. And that, my friends, in my opinion, will get you further down the road than almost anything. Meet yourself where you're at right now. And when you meet yourself there, you're going to be able to do better, perform better, move better, get further down the road. As always, thank you for your time and attention to the conversation. If you or somebody you know is having issues with low back pain or any other pain for that matter, um, please contact me um, at uh, 
You can contact me on my social media platforms or even the website at ridersedgetherapy.com and I'll be happy to help you or get you um, where you need to be to get help. I am going to be in Oklahoma in March, March 21st and 22nd to be exact. Um, Summer Terry of Superior Therapy in Guthrie, Oklahoma um, is, has asked me to come out and um, put a workshop on about things that we talk about here on the podcast every day, um, being a better rider for you and your horse. So um, if you are in the area, we would love for you to come out and say hey and have a fun, fun-filled weekend of um, learning and chatting about horses and riding, which um, is always a good time in my book. So again, thanks for tuning in this week. And as always, I will see you down the road. Thank you for listening to Rider's Edge Podcast. For show notes and other thoughts, head over to ridersedgetherapy.com. If you would like to stay connected and continue the conversation, head over to my free Facebook group, Rider's Edge Health and Wellness for Horse and Rider. Thanks for continuing the conversation, and as always, I will see you down the road.